Gina recently married her lover Kevin. Kevin recently moved into the house where Gina's mother, Melinda, lives in her spacious apartment. They met when Melinda asked to go to the neighbor on the floor above and asked for less noise in her apartment. That's when Gina discovered that a single father and his teenage son lived here. When the boys were bored, they sometimes played soccer at home. The landlord introduced himself as Kevin and apologized for disturbing her. But Gina was angry at his carelessness. She would not forgive him and threatened to rubber him to the police if they did not stop making noise in the apartment. Then, Kevin invited her to visit and cook her his signature steak. From that day on, they become friends. Six months later, she came to live with him and her daughter Molly. Kevin's son's name is Steve. Steve is 12 years old, and Gina's daughter Molly is 10. Gina moved her daughter to the same school Steve attends to make it convenient for them to drive together. But we're talking about something else right now. Gina is rushing to speak to her mother about a pressing issue. Gina's mother, Melinda, is a bright, active woman with quirks. Her quirks concern her job, which is working at the circus. Melinda has recently become completely engrossed in her art. Gina has resented her mother's lack of intention since childhood. And now, when she was in a difficult situation, she was counting on her mother's understanding. Once inside the apartment, Gina didn't find her mom right away. Melinda appeared from the far room when she started to call out for her. She looked worried and excited. Mom, what are you doing? Why didn't you hear me? Gina asked. Gina, it's so good of you to stop by. You shall see what I got for my new show right now. It's fantastic. When I perform it on stage, it's a sensation with the audience. Come on, I will show you someone, said Melinda, taking her daughter's hand and leading her into the back room. Seeing her mother's new friend, Gina screamed loudly and quickly ran out of the room. At the same time, she dragged her mother with her. In the room, her mother had placed a terrarium with an open lid and a giant snake. Mom, are you crazy? Why did you bring a snake home? She asked, closing the door to the room with all her might. Gina, why are you yelling like that? You scared Salvador so much. It's not just a snake. It's trained and doesn't hurt people. It's like to be taken in hand and gently wraps around everyone's neck. Why are you yelling like that? Melinda was outraged. Because I feared snakes since I was a little girl. My kids are scared of them too. But don't you dare show that to Molly and Steve. They'll be traumatized. Mom, I can't stay here anymore. I'm scared. I have to go to my room, said Gina and hurried off to her house. I'm sorry if you're scared. You don't have to look at Salvador. I took him to my place to rehearse the show. Why did you come to see me? Was it something urgent? I want to talk to you. I think Kevin is cheating on me, Mom. What am I going to do? I love him very much, Gina said. What makes you think he's cheating on you? Maybe you just made it up. Asked her mother indifferently, pouring herself a cup of coffee. I can feel it. He's been brooding, spending less time at home. He lies to me that he's got a lot of work. But mom, you know men always lie like that when they have mistresses, said Gina. I don't think so. Your Kevin is a good boy. You're newly married and maybe stress getting used to your new life. Try to talk to him frankly, and don't tell me more of this nonsense. Melinda replied, 
hurried to walk her daughter home. Gina walked up the stairs to her floor and was upset that her mom didn't want to hear from her. She was correct. Her circus and animals came first for her. Gina felt resentment towards her mother. At home, she cooked a delicious dinner and fed everyone in her family in the evening. When the children went to bed, she decided to talk to Kevin. The conversation took place in the bedroom in front of the television. Kevin, I think you are hiding something from me, said Gina. What do you mean, honey? What made you think that? Kevin asked. Because you started coming home late from work and are always on the phone texting someone. Did you get another woman? She asked. Before Kevin could answer his wife, they heard a scream from the children's room. It was the voice of Molly, Gina's daughter. Kevin and Gina ran out of the bedroom and entered Molly's room. She was standing in the middle of the room, crying hysterically. Kevin's son, Steve, was standing on the doorstep of her room, looking triumphantly at Molly's tantrum. What have you got again? Gina asked. Molly could not speak. She pointed her finger toward her bed. Kevin walked over and saw a small swarm frog in the girl's bed, hopping back and forth from one end to another in fear. Kevin carefully picked her up and put her in the flower pot, where the soil was moist. I'm scared of her. She has to be let out into the woods, otherwise she will jump into the bed with me again," said Molly through her tears. Well, I know how the frog got into your bed, said Gina, looking at Steve. He barely concealed his laughter. Gina was right. Their children have been at odds with each other from the day one, and this act was the last straw for Gina. Kevin, you need to talk to Steve. It's not nice of him to hurt Molly like that. They are brother and sister now. They should have a proper relationship. But for some reason, they are always in conflict with each other, said Gina. And Steve responded with anger and resentment. Actually, Molly started it. This morning, she poured ho co co on my textbooks. I will show you what she did, shall I? Steve said, then retreated to his room. Returning a few moments later with a stack of notebooks and books, he opened them and showed large brown stains on almost all the pages. The notebooks had the same things on them. What am I supposed to do with this now? I'm embarrassed in front of the teachers. It will help if you talk to your daughter. Steve turned to Gina. Molly, why did you do that? Aren't you ashamed to do that to your brother? It's ignorant. You will be punished. Gina treated her daughter. Now Molly cried even louder and began to complain. It was a realization for him calling me dragonfly at school. The boys in my class heard it and started calling me a dragonfly. He heard me first. Molly was outraged. All right, Steve. What well, is outrage I'm hearing about you? Didn't I teach you that calling people names is not lovely? Kevin was not angry. Why don't Molly tell me why I call her a dragonfly? She started it. She showed everyone a picture of our family vacation at the sea, where I was walking on the beach in pink underwear with violets on it. It's good to my friends. They started teasing me with violets. I got offended and decided to teach Molly a lesson so she wouldn't show my pictures to anyone without my permission," said Steve. The parents realized that this argument could go on indefinitely. They talked to their children and put them to bed. But Gina's thoughts were occupied with the question of Kevin's fidelity. It was essential for her to find out the truth. In the coming days, she decided to pursue the matter. Wearing a black cap on her head and black glasses over her eyes, Gina left the house to follow her husband. 
She arrived at his office when he was supposed to get off work, so that her husband wouldn't notice. She hid near the office in the bushes. When work hours were over, Kevin came out of work. He wasn't alone. Next to him was a man and some other girl. The three of them approached someone else's car and discussed something heatedly. Gina realized, and they were discussing which club or restaurant to choose for entertainment. She wanted to get closer and overhead their conversation. First, she hid near a car, but couldn't hear anything. Then she moved to another vehicle and crouched near the bumper, but nothing could be heard. The conversation of the three became animated. They even started laughing. Gina lost her patience and decided to move to the next car. She didn't notice the train line under her feet as she moved surreptitiously. One foot fell through the metal grate, and Gina herself fell. She almost screamed, but suddenly she heard a woman's voice. Honey, do you need help? How did you get here? You shall have broken your leg, said a strange woman with messy hair. On her shoulder was a large shopping bag with fancy drawings. She looked tired, but the lady seemed in a good mood. This is terrible. Why the hell did they put a drain line in the parking lot? Gina was indignant and offered her hand to the strange woman. The lady helped her out. When Gina turned her head, she saw that neither her husband, his friend, nor the car they were standing next to were in the parking lot. She realized the group had already decided on a resting place and rushed there. She felt hurt, but the pain in her leg brought her back to reality. I think I broke my leg, said Gina. Let me take a look at it. I used to work at trauma clinic. I know how to determine the degree of injury by touch, said the stranger, put her back on the ground and felt Gina's uncle. There is nothing wrong with you. It's just a soft tissue bruise. And you could break your leg with an injury like that. Don't walk on the drain lines again. The woman sat and smiled. It's all my husband's fault. Gina was indignant, and her mood got even worse. Poor thing. Did he leave you? What happened? The stranger asked, crouching down next to Gina. Two women were sitting on the asphalt in the parking lot, heatedly discussing the entire male population of the planet. Worse, I think he's cheating on me. I decided to follow him to find out the truth, but not before he left with his friends and some girl he didn't know. He left his car here in the parking lot. That's deliberate, to mislead me, but I'm just not going to give up said Gina. Oh, yeah. I've lived in this neighborhood for almost three years and know many residents are close friends. What's your husband's name? I may know something about him, the stranger said. His name is Kevin. He's 38 years old. He works as a broker in one of the companies. His office is here. Do you know him? Gina asked. Oh, Kevin, nice guy, of course I do. He's told me so many things about himself. He was a very curious past. Did he tell you that? The stranger whispered and smiled enigmatically, looking Gina in the eye. Then she winked with one eye. This intrigued Gina. What do you know about him? Tell me, it's essential to me. Gina got excited. I don't know. It will be unethical. I want to help you, but I know I will feel remorse for betraying someone else's secrets later. I will need moral compensation, said the stranger. I understand. How much do you need? Gina asked. One thousand dollars. That's the amount that will comfort my headache of remorse. You can bring the missing part later if you need more cash. 
I'm usually here. And then I will tell you your husband's secrets, said the stranger. Gina thought for a while and made a decision. You know what? I have to deal with the issue today. I have uh, 300 in my wallet. Keep it. I will get the rest for you from the ATM right now. And you are going to tell me everything now, Gina offered. The stranger gladly agreed. In a few minutes, Gina counted out the rest of the money and put it in the pocket of her new friend. She thanked Gina and smiled enigmatically. It's going to be a long story. It's so hot outside. Let's sit down somewhere in the bar. We order some drinks. And I will tell you everything, suggested the stranger. Gina agreed this time too. They took a seat at the nearest bar. While Gina waited for her smoothie, the stranger retired to the lady's room. Gina waited impatiently for her, but it was as she had fallen under the ground. Half an hour later, she was passed. Gina followed her, but did not find her in the lady's room. She ran outside and started looking around. Then she returned to the parking lot and started looking for her new acquaintance in the crowd. But it was all to no avail. Gina only now realized how she had fallen victim to such a stupid scam. She returned home in a bad mood. At dinner, her daughter Molly suddenly told her a strange story. Mom, where do you want to go? Are you often away from home? She asked. I've been out on business. Why do you ask that? Gina was surprised. Because I want to ask you something yesterday. Do you know what our daddy was doing with our grandmother in your bathroom? When you weren't home, Grandma Melinda knocked a lolly on our door, whispered something to my dad, locked themselves in the bathroom, and Steve and I were told not to leave our room. What wasn't there? Molly asked. I don't know, Molly. We will ask Kevin later. He has a lot of secrets, said Gina. In her mind, she had a million questions for her husband. A couple more days later, Steve approached Gina and asked her for a favor. I spent all the money my dad gave me for my expenses. Could you lend me some money? He asked. Gina didn't mind giving him money, but she had given her less money to that cheater in the parking lot. Steve, I'm sorry. I need to borrow money from your father too. I will tell him to give you more for your allowance now. She promised. The next day, Gina noticed that Steve's room was missing the game console she and her husband had recently given him for his birthday. Gina was worried, so she decided to follow the boy. Wearing the same black cap and glasses, she came to the school but hid near the gate. Steve went out of his studies, and a confident woman approached her. They talked about something, and then Steve took some money out of his pocket and handed it to the woman. She walked away. Now Gina was completely confused, not understanding what was happening in her family. Kevin disappeared to work as usual, so he had no time to talk with her. Gina suffered alone. Melinda was still preoccupied with her show and didn't have time for her to her talks with her daughter. And then there was Molly and Steve fighting every day. After thinking about it for a few days, Gina decided that she and Kevin should break up. After three more days, she packed up her daughter's things and moved them into her house. At this point, Kevin was at work as usual. She left him a note thanking him for the happy few months together. Then, she went with a massive pain in her heart. Coming home from work close to midnight, Kevin found Steve sitting alone in the kitchen, a note from Gina. Steve, be honest. Did you do something to hurt Gina? Or did you and Molly have another fight? He asked. No, I've got other things to do. And you deal with your woman on your own. 
Steve sat and went to his room. A couple hours later, Kevin arrived at Gina's house. At that moment, she was sitting on her kitchen floor crying bitterly. Gina, damn it, what have you done? Why did you leave us? He was outraged. I know you have another woman. It might even be my mom. Aren't you ashamed to have fun with her before the kids? I hate you both. Gina screamed. What the hell are you talking about? What the hell are you talking about? Kevin demanded, sitting beside her on the floor. Kevin grabbed his head and laughed hysterically when Gina told him everything she had learned about him in the last few days. Now, listen what I was going on. Your mom came running to me and told me that Salvador came out of her apartment and entered our bedroom. She and I found him hiding deep under the bed. I had to guard the door while your mom lured her snake out. Then the two friends went home together. Molly feared snakes, so I forbade our children from leaving the room, said Kevin. That sounds about right. She calmed down a bit. But you're having an affair with some girl from your office, she said. Kevin then had to tell the story of the delay at work. The worst drugs are business partners in a disadvantaged country. He decided to organize a fundraiser and humanitarian aid. Our boss put two of my colleagues and me in charge of this. We had to do this for two weeks after work. I'm not telling you about this because I didn't want to fill your heart with my problems. You were already upset about the constant scandals between Molly and Steve, Kevin said. Now, Gina realized how wrong she had been in her conclusions. Kevin, I'm sorry, I'm such an idiot. Did you know that a woman in love loses her mind? She asked. But there is some truth to your jealousy. It will have helped if you had immediately told me how you felt. I will have been relieved. My ex-wife, Steve's mother, texts me all the time. He said and sighed heavily. What do we do now? Gina needed clarification. She is addicted to alcohol. In her messages, she demands money from me for drinks. When I said no, she came to Steve's school and solicited his money. Therefore, my son has been misbehaving lately. But I was able to resolve this issue. My ex-wife was put in a drug rehab. She wouldn't bother us anymore. And Steve needs understanding and support, Kevin said. Gina now realized that Steve was asking her for money out of desperation. She also learned that he had to sell his favorite game console to give the proceeds to his mother. She felt extremely sorry for the boy. That same night, Kevin helped load their suitcases back into his car, and they were returning. Kevin, stop another store. I need to buy something, said Gina. And half an hour later, Gina came out with a new game console and handed it to Molly. We are going to give this to Steve, and yes, we shall be nicer to him, she told her daughter. She concluded that she had a lot to learn about family relationships. She had learned valuable lessons from her own mistakes.